So this car has damaged steering knuckles. And I'll show that to you and then show you how we can fix that pretty easily. So you can see here the wheels flopping around very loosely. So the first thing you need to do is remove the top cover from the car. And there's just this one screw under the front bumper that needs to come out. You can use a small screwdriver from an eyeglass repair kit. And once you've got that out, the top cover just rotates upward, and then you need to finesse it around the USB jack in the back. And it comes off pretty easily. The next step, um, there's two screws that need to come out. One here at the front, and one underneath the battery. To get the one out from under the battery you need to remove the foam tape that holds the battery down. So to do that I'm just going to fold the antenna up out of the way and then you can just use a hobby knife or an X-Acto knife and carefully cut the foam tape that's between the battery and the circuit board. You want to be very careful not to cut the foil case of the battery. And then just remove the two screws. There's the one here at the front, and one here at the back. So then all you need to do is remove the circuit board. And to do that, you just pull these wires out from this little notch in the circuit board here, and slowly rock the board. And Sometimes you have to lift just a little bit right there. And then it all kind of comes apart like this. I'm going to use a screwdriver just to pry underneath the front of this gearbox and you'll hear that plastic finger click. And then it kind of comes apart like this. So after that you should have something that looks like this. I'm just going to get a pair of tweezers, get my fingers out of the way so you can see clearly. This part right here just lifts up, and this part lifts up, and the two wheels lift out. And that's all there is to it to getting the wheels off. The next step will show you how to replace the steering knuckles and the wheel pins. So here's the two original wheels with the pin and the steering knuckle. And you can notice here next to the pin that this one has both of the steering pins knocked off and this one has one of them missing. And for comparison this is a new one and these have both of the pins, uh, one on either side. So the first step is to get the pin out the slickest tool I found for that is just a tapered pair of tweezers, like these. And you have to be careful not to stab yourself, but basically just put the uh, tweezers between the knuckle and the wheel and slide it out, just like that. I'll do another one here. Okay, I'll do another one here. So, it's not very hard, it just takes uh, a nice pair of tweezers like this, or or you might need to pry under there with a, a hobby knife. So the next step is pretty simple, just take the pin out of the original knuckle and discard of that. Get rid of those old ones. And if you have any fuzz or crud on there, you'll want to get that off at the same time. So the next step, of course, is to install the new knuckles in the uh, on the wheels. So basically, just as you saw there, install the pin through the knuckle, and then line up that pin with the wheel. And you can sort of do it with your fingers, but... Uh, you could use a pair of pliers or anything to squeeze that in there. 
we have a special tool that we use. That presses it in the perfect amount but you want to press it in almost all the way but not so much that the pin is compressed and can't rotate so I'll do it here again just with uh, hand tools or stuff you might have around the house just to show you um, also there's something worth mentioning there is a left and a right wheel obviously and you can see on this knuckle I have here there's a bit of a notch shown here on the right side at the bottom you can see it's notched and you need to orient the knuckle so that you have one that's notched on the left and one that's notched on the right so this one is what I'm calling notched on the right and this one notched on the left and the parts are the same, you, you, it's just flipped over, but you have to have one facing one way and one facing the other. And I'll show you why in just a moment. So here we go with the next pin through the knuckle. Lined up with the hole on the wheel. I'm just going to try pushing it with my finger. So you can see there it's got just a little wiggle room, probably too much. So I'll push it in a little more. And I can't. It's more than I can do with my fingers. So I've got a caliper tool here that I'll sometimes use in a pinch. There. Now hopefully you've got something that you can do that with. And you want to check that it's loose. And this one, although it's not spinning super freely, I can tell it's, it's loose enough. I might just lift it up just a bit with the tweezers like I did before. There. So, now they're ready to install in the car, but I'll just show you once more about that notch in the knuckle I was telling about. So this one's notched on the right side and that will go on the left side of the car like this and this one's notched on the left side and that will go on the right side of the car like this. And cut. So there's one more thing I want to show you before I close this up and that is on this slider potentiometer here right on the back side you'll see this little black finger protruding. And that's used to sense the position of the steering components. And so it's critical that when it's assembled that that steering sense finger sits inside this little pocket on this part here. And that's very difficult to show once it's assembled or during assembly. So I thought I'd point out those things now. That this little finger needs to sit in this little pocket here. So keep that in mind and I'll just uh, keep keep reassembling it here and and I'll point it out when it comes when it comes up. So the next part of course is to put it back together. Not super complicated. Um, if you have any hair and fuzz inside the car, now's a good time to take it out. Um, so as I mentioned before there is a right wheel and a left wheel and the only difference is the orientation that those knuckles are. This wheel here has the uh, notch on the bottom right now. So when it's installed like this, it's still in the bottom. And we want that to be on the car's right side. So that when it's installed, that notch faces downward. So basically all you need to do is, is slide that long slot to the knuckle over these steel pins here. And then align the bottom uh, steering pin with the, the hole in the chassis. And now this wheel has the uh, notch facing the other way. Again, just slide the slot over the steel pin. The wheel goes in the, the 
steering pin goes in the hole there. And then you're ready for this part. And basically there's this post here which needs to slide into a cavity on the bottom side. And there's a hole here and here and those need to line up with the pins on the, stop, on the top of the knuckles. It's not that hard to do. You don't want to push hard or anything like that, but just have to make sure everything's aligned and slowly align it and press it together. I probably obstructed your view during that, but but uh, it's pretty simple. Just slide it down, make sure all the parts are lined up, that post and the two pins on either side. We're still on the screen. Next, this uh, link bar has this pocket I mentioned before that needs to face forward and then basically all you need to do is line up these two holes with the two steel pins like that and that's all there is to it uh, the next part is just reinstalling the steering gearbox and massaging the uh, circuit board back into place and now is when this comes into play where you need to align this finger with this uh, pocket in that link so it's kind of like juggling in a way but you just line up the back wheels sort of where they're supposed to go and you'll see there's a little finger here which snaps into a little socket on the bottom of the uh, chassis and you'll hear it, well this one didn't click but oftentimes it'll click into place and then this is where this pin needs to line up with the socket here and if it doesn't you can Sometimes just adjust the wheels slightly to make it line up. And you're pretty much done. Now at this point, I usually take out the power button so that it doesn't get in the way of installing the gearbox. But now is the time you don't want to forget to put it back in. So it looks just like a little hockey stick. But uh, it goes in like this, upside down, with the finger facing forward. And it just slides in that little canal there. Now when you're reassembling it, there's three things to watch for. There's a white plastic nub, which is part of the gearbox, and that comes up through this hole. And then two screw holes here. And they actually sort of click into place, so you'll want to put just a little bit of pressure till you hear it click like that. And on the front, it's already clicked in, but just line those up, and then just keep a little bit of pressure with your fingertips as you install the screws. tighten them too much. It's especially important for this rear screw that it's not over tightened. If you do you'll flex the circuit board and actually permanently press the power button down. So just to tighten it until you see the top of the screw or rather the bottom of the screw head just touch the circuit board. You don't need to reef it down or anything like that. Then just line up these wires with the slot in the circuit board that's just to keep them out of the way of the tires and these two wires fit in that slot there as well almost done now since we've cut the foam tape we'll need to fasten that battery down with other means if you have some little foam tape around that's fine you can use a new piece but I'm just going to use a little bit of rubberized cement there 
Just put a small amount. You don't want it gooped onto the circuit board or anything, but a small amount there is fine. And just pull the antenna out of the way and try and place it in pretty much the same place it was. And then tuck the antenna in right beside it like this. The last step is to put the cover on. And really the only trick with this is this little finger here needs to fit in a little pocket on the back bumper there. So to do that just have both both the car and the body facing downward nose down like this at uh, 40 degree angles or so and get that hole to line up and then just look through the back USB charge hole. You just want to wiggle that so that the uh, USB connector lines up nicely and then uh, rock it together like that. And just put a little uh, pressure to pop that plastic uh, shaft or post into its hole there. And this bumper should line up uh, pretty fleshly. And then just install the screw of course. So that's all there is to it.